Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Middle School for Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the broadcast. Steve Watson will be joining us as well. Connor Donovan on camera. It is the final regular season game for Ashland Post 77. They come in to today with a 14-1 and record, hoping to get a W in their final regular season game. But of course, it is not crucial. Post 77 has clinched the one spot. They do not need to win here today, but they are certainly playing for pride, and I don't think they're going to give in. I think they're going to try to win today. It is Ashland Post 77 up against Natick Post 107. Andrew Sternick on the mound for Post 77. Let's take you through the Natick lineup. Natick is playing for something today. If they win, they automatically clinch the two seed. So Natick, I think, is certainly going to be trying to do that and be the second seed in the zone playoffs. And of course, you get that home field advantage in at least the first round. Taking a look at the Natick lineup, Max Ferrucci, the second baseman, will lead things off. Thomas O'Keefe, the third baseman, batting second. Noah Joseph, the shortstop, hitting third. Austin Twist, the catcher, hitting cleanup. David Knox, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Jacob Greenberg, the right fielder, hitting sixth. Sam Siegel, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Mike Winnie, the first baseman, hitting eighth. Andrew Manning, the left fielder, hitting ninth. Four, Natick post 107. Natick eight and four on the year, wind up and the pitch. And there's ball one with the post 77 defense. Here is Larry Sacklad. Thanks, Tom. Good evening to you. At third base, Ben Fink, Dante Devanzio at shortstop. Dom Cavanaugh, second base, Drew Racatori at first base. Sam Farrell back in the lineup in left field. Nick Calabrese in center. Matt Tomaselli in right field. Jackson Hornung behind the plate catching Andrew Sternick tonight. The 2-1 hit in the air over to right field and that'll drop in for a leadoff single by Max Ferrucci. That'll bring up Thomas O'Keefe, the third baseman. So we will be breaking down all the playoff scenarios. We can tell you one thing for sure. Post 77 will play Saturday at Mahan Field in Natick. They'll have the 4 p.m. game, and they will be playing against the uh, fourth seed. And then you have the second and third seed matching up in the 7 p.m. game. Top four teams get into the zone playoffs as this is hit in the air to right field and caught one away. Runner on, stays at first. Noah Joseph, the shortstop, will step into the batter's box. No popsicles in the uh, press box, uh, Tom, on Saturday. Well, that's unfortunate. I think we'll need them. Oh, they, <laughs> they might melt, though, immediately. Right. That's why I said don't bring your popsicles. This is Andrew Sternick's first appearance on the mound this season. For post 77. Checking at first, runner back safe. Sternick did appear last year a couple times on the mound. Try to get you those stats. And there is a strike. He pitched 10 and a third of an inning last year. Appeared in five games, started one, went one and zero, oh, had a 338 ERA. That was last season for post 77. Runner taking off from first. That's fouled away. Runner will have to retreat. So getting back to the playoff scenarios, we'll take a look at the standings. Post 77, of course, they are locked into first place. And they are 14 and one overall. Natick in second place. They are listed as nine and four. Of course, in some cases, the Medford game's included. In some cases, it's not. So I believe Natick might actually be 11 and four. And then you got Lowell, 10 and four. Hudson, nine and five. North Chelmsford, nine and six. Bill Ricca, eight and seven. Newton's eliminated. They're five and 11. Good. And their season's actually over. But there is a lot of interesting playoff scenarios tonight. Hudson and Lowell, they are playing a double header. One and one count on the hitter, Noah Joseph. One on, one out. So Hudson Lowell playing a double header over in Hudson, and there is all kinds of implications with that game as this is hit in the air over to center field. Lead runner over to third, and he's safe. 
So runners on the corners for Natick. So the scenarios with Hudson and Lowell is right now Hudson is in fourth place. They are a game behind Lowell. Hudson could actually be eliminated from the playoffs after losing four of their last five if they lose both games to Lowell and North Chelmsford beats Bill Rickett tonight, Hudson will not make the postseason. And now that, tonight, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, go no, ahead, Larry, I'm, go I'm, ahead. I'm hanging on every word. No, go ahead. Let's hear it. What do you got to say? Well, you said today was the final game for post-77, and then you also said it was the finale. So which is it? <laughs> it's both. Can oh. you believe it? I don't understand. Well, it's not the finale. It's the final game. It's the season finale. Okay. All right. Obviously, they're going to the postseason. We know that. Well, it, it's going to be a treat watching Jackson Horner uh, catch. That's his That's his position. That's what he's going to college to do. Uh, he's got incredible hands. So watch those base runners. Light up in the pitch. Slightly high. Three and one. So in that Hudson Lowell doubleheader, if... Hudson wins both games. Lowell could be in a bit of trouble. That'd be okay. Absolutely. Because they don't wash their windows in their press box. And this is hit in the air, foul territory, and out of the reach of everybody. Now, I don't know what the Lowell-North Chelmsford tiebreaker situation is. Uh, I'm not sure if they split that series or North Chelmsford won both, but if North Chelmsford has the upper hand in that tiebreaker and Lowell loses both, Lowell could be facing elimination. I could see the people at home putting little little darts in the wall underneath the team's names with all the, the possibilities. We have a Cause walk the, here. Because I'm lost. All I know is Saturday at 4 p.m. we'll be in the uh, hot box at Natick <laughs> against somebody. That is right. It'll either be Natick, Lowell, Hudson, North Chelmsford, or Bill Ricca. Yeah, and it, Newton can't come. It likely won't be Natick. That I can tell you. Yeah, Newton can't come either. Even if Natick loses here today, I don't think they can get any less than the third seed. Yeah, it's really terrible about Newton's program and Waltham's program. And they've got 85,000 people in Newton and they can't feel the team. There's a strike. Well, they did field a team. Yeah, I know. Not but a very good one, but. Uh, when you got to play baseball with your sister, I mean, I'm not being sexist or anything, but you can't get nine guys together to play baseball? Well, I, I think there's certainly going to be some changes in some of the zones next year. I mean, zone five, you had a couple teams drop just this season. You had one drop last year. Zone four lost a couple teams. So, when, you know, when you think about it, you've got 85,000 people in the community. And you've, in Holliston, Ashland, and Hopkinton combined, there might be 45,000. And they can field 20 kids. And you have 85,000 and you can't field 12, 13 kids? You know, maybe some Legion posts around this area should uh, start a baseball team. You could have guys that didn't make Ashland or Milford sign waivers. As this is hit high in the air over to right center. That's going to drop. And the runner from third is going to score. And it's a 1-0 Natick lead. So an RBI single for David Knox. So keep in mind today you have some uh, f players in unfamiliar positions. Calabrese in center. Farrell in left. Tomaselli in right. Not a typical post-77 outfield, but... You know, this is the kind of game where you can put players in different places, try out some new positions, and really it's pretty much just a practice. As Jacob Greenberg, the right fielder, will step in. Well, they're going to have practice tomorrow. Get ready for Saturday. Well, I'm sure they will. And This is hit in the air. Over to center field. Could be trouble. It's caught. And the runner from third will stay put. Nice catch there by Calabrese, who really had to come charging in to make that catch. It'll bring up Sam Siegel, the center fielder. Natick led by head coach Matt Lodi, who's done a great job with this program. Natick, very competitive program the last few years in zone five. 
I understand all the post 77 arms are available for this weekend. Pretty much. I'm not sure if Gustafson is. Oh, with the exception of him. But he's only pitched one inning. So. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. Good block by Jackson Hornung. He was practicing his blocking skills earlier with Sean Jewett. Same. It's an art. You want to keep the ball right out in front of you. Certainly you don't want to have it bounce off your chest protector and go right or left. Sam Siegel, the center fielder, is the hitter. And I think unless Sternick really runs into trouble in this game, he's pretty much going to be out there every inning. Well, Dom Cavanaugh is rested for an inning or two. Wind up in the pitch. And this is up the left side, fielded by Fink. Throw to first, not a problem. Five to three, four out, number three, one nothing Natick as we head to the bottom of the first on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the first inning, a one nothing lead for Natick. David Knox, the pitcher for post 107. Let's take a look at the post 77 lineup. Sam Farrell, the left fielder, will start things off. Nick Calabrese, the center fielder, batting second. Jackson Hornung, the catcher, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the second baseman, hitting cleanup. Matt Tomaselli, the right fielder, hitting fifth. Lawrence Tang, the DH, hitting sixth. Dante DiAvonzo, the shortstop, hitting seventh. Drew Rancatori at first base today, hitting eighth. Ben Fink, the third baseman, hitting ninth. With the Natick defense, here is Larry Sacklad. At third base tonight is Thomas O'Keefe. The shortstop is Noah Joseph. Max Ferrucci is the second baseman. Mike Winnie is at first base. Andrew Manning. And left, Sam Siegel, no relation to Bugsy. Max Greenberg, no relation to Hank. Austin Twist behind the plate, catching David Knox. So some interesting notes about the success Post 77 has had this season. 14 and one overall, six and one at home. They've outscored opponents 120 to 31. That's, well, technically it's 106 to 31. They Counted those two Medford forfeits as seven and nothing uh, games. So it's 106 runs in 13 games for post 77. And Ashland has not allowed more than six runs in any game this season. Isn't that impressive? Well, a little more than three to one in runs. Here is Calabrese. Down low, gets away from the catcher. So post 77, they're averaging eight runs per game. I think it's Farrell, though, Tom, isn't it? Uh, you are correct, excuse me. Don't let it happen again. Sam Farrell, the <laughs> hitter. Where's Dr. Watson? Oh, Put well, out a 9-1-1 for him. Stuck on the highway somewhere. There's a strike. Sam Farrell, 174 this season. He has had 23 at-bats. He's played in seven games. And a breaking pitch in there for a strike. Sam Farrell's got some wheels. He's one of the faster guys on the team. If he gets on base, he'll probably get the green light. And it's a very comfortable evening at Ashland Middle School today. Temperatures in the 70s as compared to the beginning of the week where it was in the 90s almost. But in the 70s, a nice breeze, overcast. But it's going to be very different come Saturday. This is hit high in the air over to right field and caught. One away, Calabrese will step in. Not a particularly huge crowd tonight, Tom. I can't figure that out. I don't think it's bad. Calabrese hitting a 316, 395 on base percentage. He's done very well for post 77 this season. He's a first year player. He's had a good season. 
Wind up in the pitch. Strike one. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it looked like the umpire signaled strike. Maybe I was wrong. We'll find out soon yeah. enough. I thought he stuck that arm out. We'll see if it even matters. And it doesn't. <laughs> Oof. Hit by a pitch. Jackson Horning, the catcher, will step in. I think the umpire is just, I don't think he's giving him a warning, but just making sure the pitcher, David Knox, had the right intention there, perhaps. But I can't imagine why. No, uh, there was Knox no. would intentionally hit someone. <laughs> no reason to put a runner on. Hornung a 486 on the season. 513 on base percentage. A TVL large MVP. Not for baseball, but I think overall for sports he was named the TVL large MVP. Yeah, he was. In the batter's box with a slightly open stance, then he closes it off as soon as the pitch gets in the hitting zone. Runner with a lead at first, down low. So on the bench today, you got Sean Jewett, and he's another guy that if um, Sternick runs into any issue, you might see him on the mound. Oh. He made a couple appearances last year. Did he? He did. Mm. I believe he did. I don't know. I'm going to really enjoy watching Jackson Horn on catch today. It's not a man crush or anything like that, but just he's really, really solid. All right, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not seeing him listed last year as making an appearance, but I thought he did. His teammates would have been all over him if he was on the mound. I, I must have been exaggerating. Maybe it's Louis Rossi you're thinking of. Yeah, that might have been it. I think that was it. You're right. It is Louis Rossi. Check in at first, and that hit the runner, and he will stay. He got hit twice already. <laughs> Little Indian rubber there. So the other game in zone five tonight is also pretty interesting. Bill Ricca and North Chelmsford. Bill Ricca has a very outside shot of making it. They need some help. They need to beat North Chelmsford and then they need Hudson to lose both games. There's a strike. And that is possible. Anything's possible. That's true. That's Kevin Garnett. Anything's possible. <laughs> Knox shows a pretty good life on his fastball. This is hit high in the air, foul out of play. I'm sure Natick would like to go on the playoffs on a high note. Absolutely. one nothing Natick lead here in the bottom of the first. One on, one out. There's a walk. Hit batter and a walk. Dom Cavanaugh will step in. Well, you got to think from Natick's perspective, they're definitely in the postseason, but are they going to be resting some pitching today? I don't know, but I think it might give them a, you know, a psychological advantage if they can bump off post-77 and say, you know, we beat them. And uh, we also had a, a good finish to the season, cementing that number two spot up high. Dom Cavanaugh, 355 on the season, 535 on base percentage. 10 driven in, 14 scored. And best hair on the team. That's right. As voted by the fans. Fouled away. Look out to the football camp. Looks like a high school football camp going on over at the turf fields. Yeah, wasn't Brandon Grover um, impressive closing out that game against Waltham? Boy, he had 93, 97 octang in his in that arm of his. He was very impressive. Him and Kavanaugh are going to be one two next year. You might see uh, you might see him in the playoffs. I'd throw him out there. He was throwing smoke. Oh, Kavanaugh and Grover for Ashland High next year, one and two. This post-77 team does not lack pitching, that's for sure. There's a strike. He's down 
and the count. And if you look at this roster, you got about seven or eight guys you could throw out there and have pretty good pitching. This is up the left side, takes a couple hops past the reach of the third baseman, grabbed by the shortstop, but everybody's safe. A uh, single for Kavanaugh. That haunted third base corner. There's Matty Tomaselli, the right fielder. Oh, and here comes the Rankatories and their pooches. Doggy play land down the left field line. Yeah, nice day to take the take the dog out. Yeah. Come watch some Legion baseball. I never thought of it that way. <laughs> You're not a dog guy, Larry? Well, I never thought of taking a dog to a baseball game. Yeah, you can run in the woods and get the balls back. Never thought of that either. The 0-1. This is up the middle, back. Oh, drop by the pitcher. Throw home in time. Two way. So Thomas Selly reaches on the one to two force out. Boxed around a little by Knox. It'll bring up Lawrence Tang, the DH. Larry Tang. I'm going to give him the respect he wants and call him Lawrence. Forget what his teammates call him. Mr. Tang hitting a 273 this season, 385 on base percentage. 14 plate appearances for the youngster. One run scored, two driven in. Lawrence Tang, Esquire. There's ball one. That look pretty good. Bases loaded, two outs, four post 77. Up high, a walk would score a run. I believe Dr. Watson is in the house with stethoscope and blood pressure cuff and his medical bag. That gets away from the catcher and here comes Hornig trying to score it and he will. We're tied up at one. So pass ball allows Hornig to score. Went right off the catcher's glove. Cavan up to third, Tomaselli up to second. And it's a 3-0 count. I don't know what happened there, but it looked like uh, Twist didn't squeeze his glove at all, and it just didn't even touch his pocket of his mitt. And the ball was behind him. He was kind of shocked. Set to deliver up high. And it's a walk. Base is loaded. Dante Diavanzo, the shortstop, will step in. Man on every base. Here comes the coach. So base is loaded. One is in. We're tied up at one apiece. Do you have a traffic report for us, Dr. Watson? Uh, traffic's not too great out there. Uh, okay. And we're going to have a pitching change right off the bat. Oh, look at that. Thomas O'Keefe. Well, I think that shows Natick means business today. They're not messing around. They're gonna have Max Ferrucci coming in pitch. So Knox is out, Ferrucci is in. O'Keefe is in. I believe. Uh, that's number three. Well, actually, maybe perhaps the numbers I have is wrong. Yeah. We're gonna take a time, we'll get everything straightened out. You're tuned in to the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. We're tied up at one. So the new pitcher is Thomas O'Keefe. He moves over from third base. David Knox takes over at third base. Knox was the starting pitcher. He went two thirds of an inning, giving up one run, which was earned. Actually, it was unearned. It was on a pass ball. He, he could take the loss here and he gave if up uh, Dante gets a base hit. That's right. He does. He's still responsible for all the runners on, and the bases are full. Giovanzo hitting a 304 on the season, 360 on base percentage down low. No, in there for a strike, says the umpire, Bob Dwyer. I think if uh, he turns his back to you, that's a strike. I think I figured it out, whether he says anything or not. 
Bob Dwyer and Mike Whalen, the umpires today. A pitch down low. A crew with a lot of experience. Absolutely. Two of the best in the business. Yeah, of course, Bob Dwyer, the secretary treasurer of the Central Mass Umpires Board. Mike, the past president. Wide up and the pitch. And this is hit up the left side. Grabbed by the third baseman. He'll step on the third base for the force out. And that'll wrap up the first inning. We are knotted at one, heading to the top of the second on the Asher Legion Baseball Network. Eight, nine, and one due up for Natick Post 107, a one-to-one -one ball game. Between Ashland Post 77 and Natick Post 107. As mentioned earlier, Ashland not playing for much today. They have clinched the one seed. Playing for pride, but still have some great athletes on the field and they're certainly gonna fight Natick on this one. That pitch is in there for a strike. Natick is in the playoffs, they have clinched a postseason spot, but they are fighting for seeding. They could fall all the way to the fourth seed with a loss. If with a win, they secure the second seed, I believe. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. You can and take a seat. Out number one. It'll bring up Andrew Manning, the left fielder. I know, Steve, you could appreciate that, but I'm watching Jackson Hornung's hands and how quiet they are behind the plate and how he doesn't move when that ball hits that glove. Just sticks there. And that's an umpire's love. Not much movement. Right. He's going to get some pitches that ordinarily might be balls yep. with another catcher behind there. Oh, and two. I think the more you move the ball around behind the plate, if you're the catcher, the worse off you are. There's going to be some calls that you probably won't get. Well, he just sticks it. This is hit up the middle right back to Sternick, and he will throw it over to first. One to three for out number two. We'll bring up Max Ferrucci. We'll see what runners do with his cannon. Try and... Uh, well, they don't have stopwatches over there, but I'll, I'll bet you since he's going to be a college catcher, he's he's got a pop time probably about 2-1, something like that. 1-0 to Ferrucci. Ferrucci scored the Natick run in the first inning and singled, fouled away. I should mention something like a pop time without explaining what it is. It's It's the time it takes from the catcher throws the ball till it hits the mid of the second baseman. It's in like 2.1 seconds, 2.11. And what a dive there by Fink, but uh-oh, he was unable to come up with the throw and he might have hurt himself there, grabbing at that shoulder. Not good. Ooh, we hope he's okay. That was landed right on it, it looked like. That horrible third base area. Yep. And Coach Obid's going to check on him. It's the shoulder of his glove hand. And it looks like he might come out of the game. Anyways, we're going to take a break here while they try to figure out this situation. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, H. Cam in Hopkinton, or H. Cat in Holliston. All right, so we are ready to continue on here in the second inning. Ferrucci reaches on the single. Ben Fink hurt his shoulder on that last play on his glove hand. Just kind of landed on it as he was diving for the ball. So we do have some position changes to tell you about. Dom Cavanaugh and a the runner's going to take off from first base. The throw gets through. A stolen bag for Ferrucci. Heads up play by Sean Jewett. Not his normal position. He was up. right behind second base to pick up that ball thrown by Horning. Fundamental baseball right there. Yeah. Very important this time of year. So right now, it is Sean Jewett at second base. Dom Cavanaugh at third. Will we see a swap with Jackson Hornung? That is very possible because Hornung could play second base. Jewett not typically there, but certainly a very good ball player. It is caught in right field. Could be a double play, I think. And the throw to second, that is a double play. 
or actually no, there was two outs anyway, so excuse me, that was just a one out play, but that's all they needed. So we will head to the bottom of the second. It is a one-to-one -one ball game on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, post 77 coming back up to the plate. So coming up to bat is eight, nine, and one. Jurank Torrey, the first baseman. Ben Fink, the third baseman. Sam Farrell, the left fielder. Or excuse me, Ben Fink was uh, taken out of the game due to a shoulder injury. So. Sean Jewett will be hitting for him. That's right. So Jewett will be in that spot. And Jewett took over at second base. I believe it's his first time ever playing second base. And Coach I'll give Obin, him an A so far. Yeah, Coach Obin says, you know what? We're going we're gonna to keep it like that unless Fink could end up coming back into the game. Why not? Let's see what he's got. He got the one spot locked up. And I guess it's a good time to experiment if you're going to. He's got good baseball instincts, Sean Jewett. He's been playing baseball a long time. I'm sure it's not his first time in the infield. Rankatori has struggled a bit. An 091 batting average on the season. He's played in eight games, 26 plate appearances, but he's been battling his fair share of injuries. He's got good pop in his bat. He certainly does. He hit very well during the high school season, but he's battled a hamstring injury, but I believe he's starting to get a little bit better from that as he's going to have to run this one out and the throw over to first in time, 4-3 to three for out number one. Better, better, still not great. Certainly runs faster than I could. Sean Jewett will step in. No comment. <laughs> Although he does have two ACLs, so. Does he? That's true. Got that going for him. When ACL doesn't affect sprinting yeah, he, up the baseline all that much, but I'll take it. Hit in the air over to left field, and it is caught. Two away. Warning track, Jewett. Sam Farrell will step in. Flew out to right field back in the first inning. Bottom of the second, a one-to-one -one ball game. So he has one in each knee. See, you're not playing, just broadcasting. So if you only have one, that's fine, right? Well, that's right. <laughs> I could DH. You could, yeah. <laughs> well, I got three ACLs. You got Does three? Make me, yeah, it make me faster than... Dory? No. <laughs> I got one behind the knee. Whoop. Foul back. I'll make the count. One and one. The men with the three ACLs. Yes. It's a medical marvel. Well, you know, Tom needs one, so you should give one of yours to him. Oh, that's right. Um, For a price? <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their price. I don't know if I'd want Larry's ACL, though. I don't think it would do me much good. Probably here on the first day. It's low mileage, <laughs> low mileage. <laughs> hey, did you take a uh, did, did you take a look at that uh, horse race I mentioned in the last game, that British horse race? I did. I don't know if I'd be able to announce that. Well. Because I would just probably you'll go, start laughing. You're going to see the ponies this weekend, I Steve, am. right? If you see Hoof Hearted at the, in uh, one of those races, you call me. Let me know. This is hit in the air. A little dribbler up the left side, caught by the shortstop. And one, two, three, they go to the top of the third we go. We are knotted out one apiece on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning, starting things off for Natick is Noah Joseph, the shortstop. Joseph Twist and Knox do up to face Andrew Sternick. So far, he's pitched pretty well. There's a strike. So just to recap, as this is lined up the right side, that'll trickle in for a single. Austin Twist, the catcher, will step in. So just to recap, all kinds of playoff scenarios tonight. 
Natick, they're in. They're fighting for seeding. If they win this, they will likely lock up the second seed. Lowell and Hudson, that doubleheader is absolutely crucial for playoff seeding. Hudson could actually get knocked out of the playoffs if they lose both games to Lowell and North Chelmsford defeats Bill Ricca. How do you feel about that, Dr. Watson? What a shame that would be. All right. Be a bleeder. I would ball my eyes out if they don't make it. <laughs> I'm sure Lowell's going to throw their aces at them. Good. Oh, Jackson and Horning ripped his arm back, waiting to throw down to first base. It's his natural position. Now the other scenario to look at is Bill Ricca could get in with some help. They have to beat North Chelmsford, and then they need Hudson to lose both to Lowell. And then Bill Ricca could be in the mix. But that is relatively unlikely, I would say. But you never know. Outside. So you're saying there's a chance. I'm saying there's a chance. <laughs> but it's the top four who gets into the playoffs. That one up high. One thing we could tell you for sure, Post 77 will be playing Saturday at Natick's Mahan Field at 4 p.m. And if they win Saturday, They'll play at 7 p.m. on Sunday. Runner taking off from first, hit in the air, over to center field, and caught. Runner will retreat back to first, one away. That'll bring up David Knox, the starting pitcher who moved over to third after struggling early on. And it's going to be very hot on Saturday, too, I heard. Uh, it's going to be about 126 degrees. And, <laughs> and Andrew Sternick is not holding runners on very well. He's not a you know, an all-star pitcher or anything. And this is fouled away. Well, he's thrown over a couple times, decent pickoffs. Yeah, well, they've got guys with not very great speed but taken off. Larry Sherman, you, you thought that the kid from Bill Rick on Sunday wasn't that great. Well, yeah, he, he was a pick master. And this is ripped up the middle and grabbed by Jewett and flipped a second for one. Now over to first and... A little bit too high on the throw, but they do get the four to six force out. Put a little away. mustard on that hot dog, Sean. That would do it with that little backhanded flip. That'll bring up Jacob Greenberg, the right fielder. You know he's smiling out there for sure. Look at that, he's fitting right in at second base. That one outside. Greenberg flew out back in the first inning. One on, two outs. Hit high in the air, right side. Jewett ranging back, he'll make the catch. Third out of the inning, to the bottom of the third we go. It's a one-to-one -one ball game on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, two, three, and four do up for post 77. Nick Calabrese, Jackson Horning, Dom Cavanaugh to face Thomas Keefe, who came in in relief back in the first inning. After David Knox, the starter, was struggling, Knox moved over to third. Calabrese was hit by a pitch his last time up. The lefty steps in. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, Steve Watson, happy to be with you for Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera. There's a strike. Post 77 has dominated this rivalry with Natick. There's a bunt attempt, and yes, it's he a went. strike. He certainly did. And this is up the right side, very slow roller. Glove by the second baseman, throw to first, no problem. Four to three for out number one. It'll bring up Jackson Orning, the catcher. Hey, 
He caught an inning to finish out last game against Waltham. He was pretty happy to get the uh, tools of ignorance on. So, Steve, why don't you tell us about this post-77 Natick rivalry as of late? Sheer dominance, as you said. Post-77 has won five straight against Natick. I was scoring them 28-5 to five in the process. That includes the last four regular season meetings. I was scoring them 22-2. to two. And they scored nine plus runs in four of the past seven meetings. So, sheer dominance, really. Certainly is. This is hit high in the air. Left side could be trouble, and it's caught. Two away. We'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh. Slight misjudgment. And of course, that includes a playoff win last year over at Mahan Field. That's right. I believe we were there for that one, Larry. Uh, I think we were. We chased post-77 around during the playoffs all last year. And we will this year. Dom steps in. I hope you explain to the viewers at home uh, the playoff situation. Well, considering we did that already, well, we will do it again. Yeah, no, but here's, here's the big thing. Two losses, everybody knows the rules. That's right. It's two loss elimination format. Right, Steve? Two well, losses, everybody knows the rules. It's really simple. Just don't lose two games and you're all set. So yeah, we'll do some what if scenarios. How no, about that? Two losses, everybody knows the rules. We know the rules. We'll, we'll talk more it's about the, rule the system. There it is. Kavanaugh is going to hit this one in the center field. It's caught. And that's the third out. So guess what? After the break, we'll talk more about the playoff system. It is a one-to-one -one ball game as we head to the top of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. The opposition, we can throw 170 top of the fourth inning. Natick Post 107 coming back up to the plate. 7-8 and 9 do up. Sam Siegel, Mike Gwinney, and Andrew Manning. Sternick deals in there for a strike. So getting back to the playoff scenario. Playoffs? Playoffs. Playoffs. Who's talking playoffs? And Larry ruins it. One and one. So post 77 for sure is playing Saturday, 4 p.m. A Han Field in Natick. They'll play the fourth seed, which could be anyone at this point. Wind up and the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field and caught. Nice catch by Farrell. But before you do the playoffs, you've got to practice. You're talking about practice. 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 Who needs practice? So Mike Gwinney will come up to the plate. Mike Vick, maybe. Oh. All right, so getting back to the playoffs. Post 77 plays Saturday at 4. If they win that game, they play Sunday at 7. If they lose that game, they play Sunday at 4. It's a two-loss elimination system. Top four teams go as there's Kavanaugh with a nice snag. Throw to first, five to three. Out number two. Just for men. Andrew Manning oh. will step in. He's he's the hair guy, Don, Don, Don Kavanaugh. Well, that was a nice play. So it's a two-loss elimination system. Top four teams make it. That pitch up high. And um, the way it works is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, those are the playoff days. If Post 77 wins Saturday and Sunday, they go right to the zone championship on Tuesday. Generally, if you want to know who the best defensive player on any baseball team is, you check out their hair. Best hair, best defender. And this is up the third baseline. Is that fair? No. Good grab, though. It was a good grab. Nice haircut for Dom Kavanaugh. <laughs> so anyways, before I was rudely interrupted by Larry, post 77, if they play, if they win both Saturday and Sunday, they go right to the zone championship Tuesday. If they lose one of those, they'll have to play that Monday game. And then if they win that Monday game, they'll play Tuesday. But... There's going to be at least one team that goes right to that Tuesday round as this is past the reach of the shortstop. That'll trickle in to center field, a two-out single for Andrew Manning. And now Max Ferrucci, the second baseman, will step in. All right, now my vote for the Gandhi Award is going to go to Sean Jewett for some excellent defense um, he's played so far. 
as the early balloting right now. But for the fans at home, if they do come down to Mahan Park at 4 o'clock, will they have food options? I believe there is a concession stand. Ah, very but will important. it be open? I'm sure they will. They usually host those playoff games at a place with food available. Nice but catch I, I don't by know. Drew Rancatori. That was a great catch. I don't know if anyone will be thinking about food that day. They'll be thinking about water, ice cold beverages, because it is going to be a hot one. One to one, we move on to the bottom of the fourth on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning, do up four posts, 77, 5, 6, and 7. Matt Thomas, Sally Lawrence, Tang, Dante Diavanzo to face Thomas Keith. Keith came in in relief after two outs were made and a run scored in the first. There's ball one. Only run to this point for post 77. Wind up in the pitch. Nice breaking pitch, strike one. And meanwhile, Larry's over at first base trying to figure out if that concession stand's gonna be open on Saturday. I know that's the number one thing on it, his it, mind. It, well, it's extremely important, Tom. I don't have time to eat during the ball games. Larry does though. He doesn't he has all the spare time during the games. And this is hit high in the air towards us. Get your gloves out and it is almost caught by Jewett. I got some breaking news hot off the presses. Oh boy. No food at Natick. Really? How do you run a tournament without any food? Get the hot dog trucks ready. They said they'll have water. Wow. BFD, right? Yeah. Maybe we could talk to our friends at Snappy Dogs that come down there. Although I do remember an MIAA tournament game with um, no, no concessions, right, Tom? And no water. Yeah, no water, no nothing, parking a mile away. And the announcer had laryngitis and needed water badly. Oh. There is a strikeout. They'll bring up Lawrence Tang. Tomaselli goes down by way of the K. Tang yeah. walked back in the first inning. It, wasn't that the same day that a uh, Hopkinton soccer game got moved to Marshfield High School? I believe or so. The same weekend, rather. Yes, same weekend. Yeah. How do you know all this uh, information? It was a strike. Because I lived it with this guy. <laughs> oh, that's right. You went to a soccer game? No. You went to a baseball game you and a soccer game You heard all about the soccer out. game because we had to host a <laughs> sports show and do a football game. And this is ripped in the air over to center field, and it's past the dive of the center fielder. Tang around first, heading over to second, and he's safe with a stand-up double. Lawrence Tang with the power. Dante Diavanzo will step in. He doesn't want to acknowledge the bench, but they're all over him. They should be. Second extra base hit. Young player with a very bright future has a lot of pop off that bat. I'm trying to dig up a Hudson Lowell update. Very large young player. Yeah, and I would say that's a double the whole way. If the center fielder made that catch, it would have been an outstanding catch. So, I'm not going to fault him for that one. The pitch was up high. And this is up the right side. Glove by the second baseman, throw to first. They get the out. Four to three, four out number two. Tang up to third. Drew Rankatori to the plate. How, how do you run a tournament without any food? I don't, I don't get it. You make a bid for the tournament, you're gonna host all the games, and you don't even bring even a little, like a little deli or something? Well, bologna? Maybe post 77 will just have to bid for next year. I'm surprised because they do have a concession stand there. As this is bobbled by the first baseman, Tang will score and post 77 has taken the lead. No, it's foul. Late foul call there. Kind of a quiet one too. He, he just flicked like, out his finger, that's all. Give it a finger flick. Mike Whalen was concentrating, make sure it went foul. Yeah, although he wouldn't be the one to make that call anyway. He's in the B position right now. Ah, good to know. Hit high in the air over to center field, ranging to the left, and it's caught. 
So that's the third out. It remains a one-to-one -one ball game, heading to the top of the fifth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, two, three, and four do up. Thomas O'Keefe, Noah Joseph, and Austin Twiss to face Andrew Sternick, who's been dealing so far today. We got a temperature drop to 67 degrees. Isn't that nuts? And just to think, in two days, it's going to be 40 degrees hotter than it is right now. Welcome to New England. Yep, exactly. And then next week, it's going to be in the 50s. Snow? Perhaps. This is hit in the air past the reach of the shortstop. That'll get into left field. It'll lead off single for Thomas O'Keefe, who started at third base, took over on the mound. No Joseph, the shortstop, will step in. One thing that has not been dropping is this program. This program was 110 and 1 going into play on July 10th, 2016. Since then, 50 and 16. Wow. That's a 757 win percentage. Whew. Crazy. It's a lot of winning. It certainly is. One and oh. I want to see a stolen base attempt against Jackson Horning. And this is up the left side. That's going to get in to left field. Two on, no outs. That'll bring up Austin Twist, the catcher. Will Nadick try and sacrifice their runners over? They might. Down low. No sign of that. If so, Dominic Kavanaugh would have to charge and Ivanzo would have to rotate over to cover third base. Sternick looks at second and deals. Hit in the air, left side, foul territory, and nearly caught just off, <coughs> excuse me, just off the glove of Farrell. Overran it. And he had to cover a lot of ground to even come close to that one. That was impressive speed there. Well, he's the fastest guy on the team. Well, he showed off the wheels there for sure. Line up and the pitch. Down low, good block by Hornung. <laughs> he just stared the runner. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. Runner at second base getting pretty decent lead. Sean Jewett making no attempt to keep him close. Neither is Dante Devanzo. And this is ripped into center field. That'll get down. Lead runner being waved around. He's going to score with ease. Two to one, Needick. An RBI single for Austin Twist. Still no outs. There's going to be a trip by Jake Obid to talk to uh, Andrew Sternick. David Knox set to step in. We'll see what the leash is with Sternick. I know. Uh, Coach Obid wants to try to leave him out there for as long as possible. Rest is pitching for the upcoming zone playoffs. They got Matty Tomaselli out in right field. And it looks like it's just a visit, chat with the infield. Well, I could tell you one thing about the Hudson Lowell matchups. I got the Hudson lineup. Pitching in game one is Matt Lowe for Hudson. Who's he? Rob Lowe's kid? <laughs> I think so. Their first game started at five, so that should be almost over. 
Hudson just needs to win once to clinch a playoff spot against Lowell in that double header. And this is going to take an awkward hop into center field. And the lead runner going to be stopped. It'll be bases loaded with no outs. A single for Knox. And that'll bring up Jacob Greenberg. So Natick on a bit of a rally, up two to one here in the top of the fifth. Wind up in the pitch. Hit in the air, foul out of play. Like a Tory thought about making a dive for it. Infield is playing in all the way around. Down low. They're not going to concede a run to Natick. No, Sternick needs that ground ball. Check swing. Did he hold? Yes. Oh, come on, Mike. <laughs> You got some play with these guys, right? Wind up in the pitch. And this is hit in the air over to left field. That's going to get down for a hit. One run is in. A second run being waved around. Two runs will score for an edict. A four to one lead. A two RBI single for Jacob Greenberg. Sam Siegel, the center fielder, will step in. Well, post 77. They got the one seed clinched up. They're using some guys you typically wouldn't see in the lineup. They're taking advantage. Sean Babineau available tonight? He actually pitched Tuesday in the uh, All-Star game. Yeah, he told me all about it today. For What is it, the Independent League? Futures League. Futures League. Ah. There's a bunt foul. He induced two ground balls. Had a bleeder of a base hit and struck out a batter in his one inning of work. One pulled back for a ball. Throw to second, almost got him. Usually it's... Jewett throwing to Horning. This time it was Horning throwing to Ju Jewett. Well, did they discuss it between themselves before the game? I doubt it. One and one is the count on Siegel. Bunt pulled back. Well, the game is kind of getting a little sleepy. Wind up in the pitch. There's a bunt. Popped up in the air. Caught by Sternick. One away. That's a really bad bunt. <laughs> it certainly was. Mike Gwinnie, the first baseman, will step in. What did you think of the quality bunt, Steve? It wasn't very high quality. <laughs> There's ball one. As much as Jackson tried, he tried to pull the bound ball down a little bit. Home plate umpire wasn't buying. There's a strike. Just turned the wrist ever so slowly. Jackson did, he got that strike. Sternick looks at second and deals. Down low, gets away from Horning. Both runners will push up. Wild pitch there. 
First one of the game for Sternick. Jackson Horning playing with his fingernails. Hopefully he didn't get the ball off one. Inside heat. Three and one. There's a walk. Base is loaded. Steve. See how he tried to sell that one? Andrew Manning will step in for the sec uh, third time this Flip game. Flip his glove down. If you have to sell it, it's not a strike. Nothing to sell. I can sell you a bag of popcorn. So what should it be tonight, fellas? Chicken salad or pizza? I think Ooh. you skip both. Go all out. Ooh. A chicken salad pizza? <laughs> there you go. Do it with a fantastic catch over at second base. Two away. Robbie Alomar, Jr. <laughs> second baseman of the year in zone Se five, right? Second, second baseman of the year in zone five. Nadek is batted around. Max Ferrucci will step in. He's made so many unbelievable plays at second base, I don't think they can hold the Gandhi away from him. And this is ripped into center field, but standing right there to make the catch is Calabrese for the third out of the inning, but Natick plates three runs, and they lead it 4-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the fifth on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, a 4-1 to one lead for Natick. They played three in the top of the inning. New pitcher for post-107, third pitcher of the game. Sam Siegel has moved over from center field to take over on the mound. And now in center field, it's Max Ferrucci, and the new second baseman is going to be Thomas O'Keefe. That gets away, ball one. Oh. Over at third is David Knox. So a few position changes for Natick. As Sean Jewett, perhaps the best defensive second baseman in the league in the batter's box. What do you mean perhaps? <laughs> yes. There's no doubt about it. This is a unanimous selection for being the best second baseman in the league. Absolutely. The ball magnet, that kid. You can put him anywhere on the field, I think. Right. Down low. There's a walk. Four pitch walk. He's got a good eye, too, at the plate. And we'll bring up Sam Farrell. Looks like we have Matty Tomaselli warming up. Sam Farrell voted with the nice exterior on the uh, 77 ball club by the fans. The fans have spoken. The fans spoke. I, I didn't have a vote. Uh, no one wants your vote anyway. No, I understand that, but this is as it was reported <laughs> to me by sources. Line up and the pitch. Well, that's six straight balls. <laughs> Well, new pitcher. I mean, perhaps the momentum could be changing here. Looks a little bit like Joe Kelly. And the runner steps off to get the runner back. <laughs> he got scared. The pitcher <laughs> stepped off. Line up in the pitch. Down low. Three and zero. Oh. Well, the umpire scolded uh, the pitcher for not waiting for the uh, go sign. There's a strike. Three and one. One for eight. I don't know if Farrell was quite ready for that pitch. I don't think he was. 
Gets a piece of this back to the pitcher. Throw to second for one and now to first. And it's not going to be in time. So Farrell reaches on the one to six force out. They'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Bit of a lead at first. This is hit foul in the air, just past us. Wind up in the pitch runner taking off from first, and the pitch was low. Good timing there by Sam Farrell. The speedy Sam Farrell. His nickname is Thunderbolt. Is it really? Yes. It sounds like a horse's name. Well, I was inside. Hoof Hearted was a horse. You going to see him this weekend? It's also your nickname, Larry. Yes. Down low. I will see some, Larry. Did you know that there's actually no racing on Saturday? It's going to be too hot. For you or for the horses? For the horses. So the whole car has been canceled. It's going to be that hot. Inside strike. Yeah, it was an inside strike <laughs> on the outside corner. <laughs> so why are you going to Saratoga Springs if the whole card's been canceled? Just for Saturday. It's still on for Sunday. Hello. And... Runner to second, he hit the runner. Ooh. And that was a uh, walk for Calabrese, and Farrell gets beaned in the leg. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung, the catcher today. A very good base runner will watch the angle of the ball after it leaves the pitcher's hand, and if it's reading down. There's going to be an infield chat for Natick. They'll take off. So Governor Baker did uh, declare a heat emergency from noon Friday to Sunday evening, and he ordered city pools and cooling centers open to all residents. That include dogs too? Um, They've no. got to be licensed. I think they should be considered residents. That's true. I mean, you've got a license. You're allowed to go in the pool. But they don't pay taxes, so. They dog taxes, they have taxes. That's right. <laughs> they got to be spayed or neutered or have other <laughs> procedures. And this is past the reach of the pitcher, grabbed by the second baseman, steps on second for one, throw to first. That was a pretty nice double play there by the second baseman, a four to three double play to wrap up. The fifth inning, we will head on to the top of the six. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, or HCAT in Holliston. Top of the sixth inning, three, uh, two, three, and four do up. Thomas O'Keefe, Noah Joseph, and Austin Twiss for Natick, a four to one game. We do have an update from Hudson. Lowell has taken game one of the Hudson Lowell doubleheader, seven to nothing. Hudson now seven and six overall. Game two is starting shortly over in Hudson. This is up the left side, glove by Kavanaugh, throw to first, not a problem. Nobody plays the hot corner down here at Ashley Middle School than Dom Kavanaugh. That'll bring up Noah Joseph, the shortstop. So things getting interesting over in Hudson. And don't I know you would. And don't forget, if Hudson loses both games, they have a chance to get knocked out of the playoffs. That be truly unfortunate. They're not definitely out if they lose both games. North Chelmsford needs the win. But if Hudson does lose both, lose both games, then the door is open. But actually, Bill Ricca could uh, be interesting, too, if they win and Hudson loses both. Bill Ricca could sneak in. I don't know what all the tiebreakers are. It depends on... Uh, on the head-to-head -head matchup, that's the first tiebreaker. And then I think it's like runs scored or something crazy. 
You know, I think we should just have a tiebreaker game. I think they should. Seriously, I think they should. This is hit in the air, right side, and it is going to land in fair territory. Jewett really hustled out there to try to get to it, but just could not get there in time. A one-out single for Joseph. Austin Twist will step in. So Lowell with the shutout over Hudson in game one. And right now the two, three, and four seeds, we don't know who's getting those. If Natick wins this game, I believe they lock up the two seed. I could be wrong about that, though. Up high, checking at first, almost got him. Then the other matchup to pay attention to, North Chelmsford and Bill Ricca. Andrew's going to do a little bit better job of holding that runner on. There's a strike. So Hudson has now lost five of their last six games. It's a rough way to go into the playoffs if you make it. And this is going to get away from Horning. He lost the ball, and the runner heads to second. Is he going to head to third? No. He thought about it. He did. Couldn't find that thing. Yep. We're going to put, like, uh, GPS tracking on it or something. <laughs> put, like, a key finder on it or something like that. That will bring up Austin Twist. Swing and a miss. An angry throw back by Hornung. Catcher's worst nightmare, the ball between his feet. He can't see. Up high, he thought about throwing down. Wind up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the right side. Jewett with the play, throw to first. Not oh, a problem. unbelievable play by Sean Jewett. That was the greatest 4-3 to three I've ever seen. Second baseman of the year right there. Joseph moves up to third, two outs. That'll bring up David Knox. They're going to have to really wrestle the Gandhi away from him. Ben Fink says he's taking Gandhi. He uh -huh. should for sacrificing that shoulder. There's a strike. And this is up the right side. That'll trickle in. Another Natick run will score. RBI single for David Knox. Noah Joseph comes around to score. It's a 5-1 ball game. Jacob Greenberg, the right fielder, will step in. Nice pitch there, 0 and 1. I know you. I don't know about you, Steve, but are you being blocked out? Uh, okay. This is a slow roller up the right side that'll bounce off of Rankatori. Jewett picks it up, throw over. He got him. Sean Jewett with another great wow. defensive play. He's, Second baseman of the year. He owns, he owns the Gandhi now. You can't take it away from him. Oh, absolutely. Well, Natick plates another run. It's a 5-1 to one Natick lead as we head to the bottom of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, stepping in is Dom Cavanaugh. Four, five, and six to up, four post 77. And the first pitch is ball one from Sam Siegel. Post 77 did have two on with one out last inning, but we're unable to play any runs. This is hit in the air, a little bloop shot that is in fair territory and caught by Siegel, went away. Post 77 down to their final five outs. Well, Tomaselli will step in. 
Natick up 5-1, to one, but again, this game doesn't really matter for post-77. They have the one seed locked up. 2-3 and 4, still all up for grabs. Natick puts themselves in a very good position. If they're able to finish this game off, they will likely be the two seed. If Lowell defeats Hudson in game two, they already beat him in game one of their doubleheader today. Hudson could be knocked out of the playoffs if North Chelmsford beats Bill Ricca. But what if Bill Ricca wins? I'm not, what happens to uh, Hudson? I'm not 100% sure, unfortunately. Depends on the tiebreaker. But if Natick should lose tonight and Bill Ricca wins, what happens to North Chelmsford? Uh, they could get, they, they get knocked out. Fouled away. I think this time we should just have a tiebreaker game. They really, should. Really. They really should. You know, we should we, one we, loss, elimination. You can have it right before the tournament starts. One, one loss, at, everyone knows the rules. Have it at noon on Saturday. <laughs> tiebreaker Friday. And then, who, no, no you do it Friday. No, have it Saturday. Cool. Oh, heads Fouled up. Away. Saturday at noon, then whoever wins plays right again at 4 o'clock. With no food. See if we have a bill. Or sustenance with, with allowed. No Correct. Oh. oh, that's last night. Bill Ricca beat Waltham last night, 11 nothing. How they played that game. They played last night? Apparently. Oh, no, that was five days ago. Never mind. Their Twitter's a little. Their <laughs> Twitter litter. <laughs> their Twitter is a little did, outdated. Did he call him out for attempting to bunt on a third strike? I think he did, yes. Two away. I'll bring up uh, Lawrence Tang. Twitter litter. It was kind of ugly. He, he was in between. I don't know whether he lost track of the count, but. Well, if you're going to have something ugly, might as well be in this game. Swing oh. and a miss. Tang had a nice double back in the fourth. He really can hit the ball, this kid. Wait till next year. He'll be pounding it over the fence. That was a home run swing, 0-2. A couple. You know, I heard they might actually move the fences back. For him? Yeah. That's yeah. What, Ashland puts a lot of money in this. So we're going to miss. Strike three. A uh, three... Pitch strikeout for Tang. One, two, three, they go. To the top of the seventh we go. Natick leading 5-1 to one on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. The top of the seventh inning, a 5-1 to one lead for Natick. Matt Tomaselli on the mound, relieving Andrew Sternick. Yeah, Sternick has moved over to right field. Tomaselli on the mound, swing and a miss. In my view, totally blocked by coaches. Right. Well, it's been blocked for Steve and I the whole game. That's okay. You guys don't say many relevant things anyway. Nah. Slow roller up the left side, picked up by Kavanaugh. It's a foul, foul ball. ball. I think that may have hit him in the box. Ah. That must have hurt. Yeah. Oh, and two. It's only a flash wound, right, Tom? It's fine. Absolutely. Native coach flashing his signs to the back of his hitter's shirt. This is hit in the air over to left field. Caught. Hey, I'd say Natick's probably my second favorite team in the zone. Could have sworn it was Hudson. <sighs> you got a great field, good coaches. They always provide a lineup very quickly. That's good. Classy team. Oh. Mike, is the game almost over? I'm just asking. Mike Winnie will step in. This is hit high in the air, and it is dropped by Hornung. Almost had That's it. That's an E2 right there. E2. Yeah. E2 all the way. Yeah, he should have had that. I, you know, as much as you don't Shoot like to do it, you gotta, you got to call an error when an error is, you know. Chua went flying over from second base. He Lost his hat, too. He did. Well, if you're going to make some errors, do it in this game, but not in any of them after. Because it all counts from here on out. 0-2. Oh, Sean Chua playing a very deep second base. Check swing he held. One and two.
And this is up the left side, grabbed by the shortstop, throw over, and it gets away from the first baseman, an errant throw by Diavanzo, and an automatic advance for Gwinnie. Uh, Drew knows better than that. He's going to come off the base Don't and get the ball. So Gwinnie over at second, one out, Andrew Manning to the plate. Native coach texting to his girlfriend. There's a strike. Trying to make a love connection while there's a ball game going on here. Very serious contest. It's multitasking. Wow. There's another strike. Oh, and two. Or he could be scoring the game on his phone. No texting while coaching. It's a high crime and misdemeanor. It's in the American Legion rule book, too. What page? Page 19. <laughs> There's a strikeout two away. Three. Oh, the things we talk about during a meaningless game. Max Ferrucci so, will step in. Uh, I was just going to ask that question. You were reading my mind, Tom. So, in a sleepy game like this, do the umpires sort of get lulled to sleep? No, or? not at all. Not this crew. They're well, the they're not. I mean, you know, you got to stay sharp, make the calls, but. Well, no, it's still a game. Natick's still playing. They're fighting for seeding. I was kidding, Larry. That's off the glove of Kavanaugh. Nearly had it. Yeah, got lead it. runner going to score. Here he comes. And it's going to be a 6-1 to one lead. you got to give him an error on that one. You have to. Yes, I agree. E5. So, Larry, in a game that's truly mathematically meaningless, yes, I think that. It, it's just a natural human human it, nature to sort yes, of just. Yeah, and same thing with a game that's long, drawn out, lopsided, boring. It, it can be the same way, especially a game with a lot of walks. Oh, you mean like the Hudson game we had the other night in Hudson with the yes, seven the, walks? The, the, the first four innings of that game were, oh, yes. my God, boring. There's, what, I think, one hit combined in the first four innings. should just edit those out on the broadcast. Yeah, the first four innings just didn't happen. <laughs> Down low. In there for a strike, says the umpire. You know, Tom, I would say just play the whole, what, fifth inning when, when Ashland scored 11 runs, but I think that lasted like an hour. Yeah. Oh, that would be embarrassing to get a call out on that. Oh. So last night in zone five, Lowell beat Bill Ricca in both games of a doubleheader. Wool has a chance to repeat that today against Hudson. What a way to fight their way back into the postseason. And this is up the middle, grabbed by the shortstop, throw over, got him! Nice play there by Diavanzo flashing the leather. Six to three, four out number three. We will head to the top of the seventh, post 77 down to their final three outs on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. I think that Post 77 down to their final three outs as we enter the bottom of the seventh. Seven, eight, and nine do up. Dante Divanzo, Drew Rancatori, and the greatest second baseman I've ever seen, Sean Jewett. Did you give the viewers at home the bad news about the Gandhi? Yeah, there won't be a Gandhi presentation. Although there's the still loss. one half inning left. They still could win, and there could be a Gandhi. That's true. That's, That's true. true. You, you never know. So we do want to remind bro uh, those watching, listening, that... Post 77 has clinched the zone five number one seed. And there's a hit batter. That hurt. Diavanzo will march down to first. Post 77 will start their playoff run at Mahan Field in Natick, 4 p.m. Saturday under the blistering heat. And they will likely not play Natick, but they could play Lowell, could be Hudson, could be North Chelmsford. Yeah, but there's a weather alert uh, issued by the governor, correct? There is. But I think they're going to play baseball anyway. Without any food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing baseball without food, though, is rough, especially in 108-degree weather. Well, Larry, I think they shut down th that whole idea because you requested that ch chicken salad pizza. Mm. So post-77 wins on Saturday, checking that first runner back safe. 
If Post 77 wins their 4 o'clock game on Saturday, they'll play 7 o'clock Sunday night. All the district tournament takes place at Mahan Field in Natick. If they lose Saturday, which of course we hope doesn't happen, they'll play 4 o'clock on Sunday. So they're definitely playing Saturday and Sunday. And if they win both Saturday and Sunday, they don't play Monday, they'll play Tuesday. If they lose one of those games, they will play on Monday, and then they'll have to win Monday to play in the zone championship Tuesday. And that's going to get away from the catcher. Diavanzo will advance with ease. Pass ball there. And of course, all games are in Nadek. No trips up to Lowell this year and yep. stuff like that. It's a great thing. And I think my mom's looking for me. You know, I could have pulled a John Tortorella and picked your phone up for you during the broadcast. It's true, you could have. <laughs> anyway. And for those of you that didn't hear earlier, Lowell and Hudson playing a doubleheader tonight over in Hudson. Lowell has won game one, seven to nothing. If Lowell wins game two, Hudson could perhaps be eliminated from postseason contention. Will you post that on your Twitter page? Maybe I will. Twitter litter, right? <laughs> my Twitter litter page. It's going to be my new Twitter handle, I think. There's a ball outside. One and two. All fastballs, and he just threw the wrinkle in there. Fouled away. Rankatori 0 for 2 today. There's a strike for out number one. He knew it too. I'll bring up Sean Jewett. Phenomenal second baseman. Look at that uniform. That's a thing of beauty. Well, if he wants a day off from behind the plate but still wants to get in the lineup, I think Coach Obed now knows where to put him. <laughs> that pitch was on him before he realized it. Oh, and one. Got a swing a little earlier. Fouled away, 0-2. Oh oh, Worcester Bravehearts are tied up in the third. Or tied up in the bottom of the fourth with a runner on third. I predict a curveball. Two straight fastballs, here comes a curve. Let's see if you're right. Uh, yeah, hit him. Hope he's all right. Curved right into him. Second hit batter of the inning. All right. Two on, one out, Sam Farrell to the plate. His pitch sequence wasn't too mysterious. You got base runners, that's what you need. You got the tying run on deck. Or actually, no you don't, <laughs> it's six to one. Very wide stance for Farrell. Dello. Pitcher takes a look at second and deals. Slow roller could be trouble. Picked up by the pitcher. Throw to first. A great throw over. One to three for out number two. Both runners on advanced. Pretty impressive play. Yeah, that was a good throw by Twist. Austin Twist, the fourth pitcher of the game for Natick, was the catcher. And I believe it was Twist swapping with Siegel. Well, his name was Oliver. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. It was a good one, Larry. <laughs> Upon a game. 
<laughs> Sometimes it's more like five puns a game for you. Yeah. Nick Calabrese, the hitter. You remember the Admiral from the Stoughton Black Knights, don't you? Robbie Seaman? Yes. <laughs> Fouled away. Ooh. Trying to take out his teammates there. Nick Calabrese's been hitting the ball very well lately. Brandon Grover's a no-show today. He had a couple of good games in a row. Yeah, he's at home resting, getting ready for Saturday. Without any food. Wind up in the pitch. Check swing. I don't think he held. He did not. Nope. One and two. Post 77 down to their final strike. Six to one lead for Natick. And this is hit in the air over to right field. Snagged by the second baseman. What a catch. And that'll be the third and final out of the game. Natick post 107 comes away with the 6-1 to one victory over post 77. Well, it was a relatively meaningless game for post 77. They have the one seed all clinched up. They put some guys in different places. They don't normally do so. They got some players you don't normally see in there. They experiment a little bit, but they had fun with it. But Ashland post 77 will end their regular season with a record of 14 wins and two losses. And they are the regular season zone five champs. What a year it's been for Ashland. But now it's playoff time. And the playoff run will start Saturday in Natick, a 4 p.m. game against a team to be determined. It should be a lot of fun. We'll be there for the postseason every step of the way. The final score for the final time. Ashland post 77 falls to Natick, six to one. For Connor Donovan on camera, for Steve Watson, for Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on either WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM in Hopkinton, HCAT in Hollison. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you for the playoffs.